like ambassadors for Christ Christian Church. I'd like for you to stand with me and just recite that common phrase that we like for people to know about us, that we in life, we are people who are Oh, oh, oh. 
Lord, these things for the body of Christ. We ask that you would teach us, O oh God, that you would speak to our hearts, that you would cause us to respect those who are in authority, that you would give us that fivefold ministry in every single church that is open in your name, Lord God, so that we would be able to be strong and withstand the wiles of the devil in this wicked and perverse generation that we are suffering through right now. We ask you, Lord, these things because we know it is of your will that we would prosper, be in health, even as our souls prosper, that we would give you the glory in all that we do, that people would look at what we do and, and be jealous, that they would want you, oh God. That's what we know you would have for us as children of God. So as we take this communion, oh God, touch us collectively and touch us individually. And we will be to the praise of your glory, God honoring, God fearing, God proclaiming, oh God. We just want to be what you would have us to be, what you brought us here on this earth to be and do, that we would not leave here with our work undone, and that we would finish well, oh God, in the name of Jesus. So we ask these things as we take communion, and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to ask those who are serving Minister D.C. and Elder D.C. to come and Elder Dana.
age crowd. Amen. 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 The singing voice that prepares our heart, we will receive the word, the word from our pastor. Amen. 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 Well, let's give God a shout of praise. Hallelujah. When your name is called. Amen. See, his yes. word approved that God was wrong. Yes. That he's still mighty and strong. Yes. Yes. Let your power fall. When your name is called. No. Prove that God is wrong. That you're still mighty and strong. Any believers in the house? Strange. 
changed to be up here. I'm used to being up here every Sunday, but you know, the, the Lord allowed me to be able to have a little time off uh, to get some restoration, to be restored, um, rejuvenated, um, to gather some thoughts, um, to get some much needed rest, and I uh, thank God for that. Yeah. Uh, that he had given me the presence of mind. Sometimes you can do something for a long time and uh, you start to burn out. I'm glad that God took me off the uh, secular job that I had for some 35 years and allowed me to retire and to resist full time. What a blessing.
when it's something that we enjoy to do. Now, I'm going to be truthful about it. When I, when I went to work, there were many a day that I didn't want to go to work. Uh, I didn't want to get out to bed. I didn't want to get up early. I didn't want to get on the road. I especially didn't want to go in to work. I didn't want to see some of the people that I work with because I just didn't like some of them. And I'm pretty sure they didn't like me either. Uh, but, you know, that was something I had to do. I'm not a lazy person, but I just did not want to get up and go to work. Um, it was a, it's a routine, isn't it? And, and, and it's one that you accept it to do. Many of us, you know, we, like, tomorrow is two, no, tomorrow is Labor Day, Tuesday back to work. How many of us are ready to go back to work? How many of us want another day off? <laughs> I don't know about you all, but I would want another day off. As a matter of fact, I did that. Took another day off. And you know, and, and, and the thing about it was, I, I used a sick day instead of a vacation day because I wanted to save my vacation day. So I lied and took a sick day, but I wasn't sick. <laughs> Everyday 
work as a service for God. All right. hmm. I ain't no much to go to work and say, you know, I'm working for God. Amen. <laughs> that guy's only got one person in there. I'm working for God this morning. Amen. Now, this is what Paul said to the church at Corinth. He says, therefore, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. And he said to the, to the, to the people at that Colossae, he says, whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Giving thanks to God, the Father, through him. And then he, then he, and he said to the church at Colossae, whatever you do, do it heartily. As to the Lord, not to me. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And that's what Paul meant in, in, in Romans 12, 1, when he said, um, uh, uh, um, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing unto God, which is your reasonable service. Yes. Yes. Uh, it actually, it's your spiritual service. Or your worship that, that, that you're doing. Yeah. We can serve God yeah. in a way, uh, and we can serve God in the way we work and where we work every day. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Uh, uh, let me share uh, this scripture with you out of Ephesians 6. Uh, in this verse 5, um, it says, uh, like this, I'm going to read it from the translation. It says, Workers, obey your earthly masters with respect and fear, and with sincerity of heart, just as you would obey Christ. Obey them not only to win their favor when their eyes are on you, but like slaves of Christ, doing the will of God from your heart. So do it wholeheartedly. Do the will of work. Um, do something like uh, somebody else just do. They, they slack. Um, people all get trying to find ways to, to do their job a little easier, so they cut corners. Yeah. Uh, me, I worked in a factory, and, uh, um, and, and we built parts, and sometimes we would cut corners to get that part made. Um, you would never know it. Um, you, you, you don't see the parts that go on your car. And people, they take all type of privileges of, of being able to you know, leave this, leave this off, and uh, get, get, get by with this. And that's why you have the quality inspectors who come by to, to look to see that finished product is built right. But oftentimes, the workers get a little slack, and they cut some corners. And you'd be surprised of the things that's on your car that um, really um, have a defect in it. You would never know it, you would never see it, because who's going to crawl under a car to look at all the stuff that's in there? You open your engine today and you look at it, it's confusing, isn't it? Working on an engine today is not like it used to be 50 years ago. All right, all right. You could go in and look in the engine, you could change the spark plugs and do all that. Now you can't do that stuff. You got to take it to the dealership and then, uh, you know, they got to run di uh, di diagnostics on it to see what the problem is, the problem is and, then, and then they charge you an arm and a leg to fix the car. Uh -huh. They don't really tell you what, what the issue is. They say, well, diagnostics say, you know, this is going on, that's going on, and it's going to cost you this much to get the car fixed. You got to pay that much to get the car fixed because you need the car to go back and forth and do the things that you need to do, right? Well, we have to, those that we work with, we have to obey them. We don't always like those who are over us. All right. uh, you can be the nicest person as a supervisor, and somebody, somebody's not going to like you. All right. Anyway. Yeah, anyhow. Amen. And you can be the meanest, the sternest supervisor.
and they can help you. But if you hide your mind and you know it all, you know you're something to mess up. Uh, don't be in a setting where uh, someone's life is on the line. Would you want to be in an operating room and you got someone, you know, you got uh, whoever it is, uh, 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 anesthesiologist being contrary uh, to what the doctor wants? He's got to put you under. He can put you under, he can bring you out. He can put you under and you won't come out. He was forced to have Daniel thrown. 
gave him advice and they know why he would and he would know. So they said, King, put him in the lion's den. This man is uh, he's messing with our stuff. The things that we do, the, the things that we do. Daniel was up front. He was for God. The others were against God. Mm -hmm. They wanted to do wickedness and evil things. So, you know the story. Uh, God shut them out of the lions. Daniel was unharmed. And then on the next morning, Darius comes rushing to the lion's den, expecting to find the bones of Daniel. And uh, listen to what Darius said. Verse 20 of chapter 6 of Daniel. Uh, when he came near the den, he called to Daniel in an anguished voice. Daniel! Daniel! Servant of the living God! Has your God, whom you serve continually, been, been able to rescue you from the lions? Isn't that interesting? Uh, Daniel worked in a pagan environment. He worked in a pagan office. He worked for a pagan king, and yet the one thing that pagan king knew about Daniel was that Daniel served God continually. And that's what we need to do. Serve God continually. Does that mean we can't have some fun? We can have fun. But let's look at the fun that we're having. Amen? Amen. Anything that's done in the dark and you call it happy is pretty much something that's evil. It's under the hand, it's under the line. And you don't want people to see the things that you know. Right. Right. Shed right. light on you. you don't want that light shed on you that you're doing something yeah. that's not like God. Right. Amen. Amen. We've been there. We've done that. Amen. Some people still do things in the dark. Mm. Think of Joseph. Talk about making lemonade out of lemons. When, when Joseph was sold into slavery, he worked for his master and the Lord blessed his house. Right. Joseph worked hard and made sure the house was in order. When he was in prison, Joseph worked hard and the prison was blessed, wasn't it? Right. The jail never worried about the prison because Joseph was an upright man. This may not make sense to have a blessing in uh, uh, this prison, but Joseph didn't care where he was uh, at, that he was giving his best to the Lord. All right. Amen. So if you're in a, a circumstance that you don't want to be in, just serve God. Yeah. The thing's going to work out for your good when you're doing it for the Lord. Yeah. It doesn't matter what it is. You know, you can be on your job and you don't like what you're doing, but just do it unto the Lord. Watch how God just makes it seem like, you know, it's effortless. You know, and he's giving you and, and allowing you to have joy in doing what you're doing. Amen. 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 So, um, we, we all have to understand this. And all of you ought to know that. We all are ministers. First Peter, chapter 2, verse 9, says this. You are a chosen generation, yes. a royal priesthood, yes. a holy nation, mm. God's own special people. You know you're special because God says you're special. Yes. That you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. God's the only one that's got marvelous light. The devil has darkness. Does everything in the dark. But God, He works in the light. He lets you see where you're going. He takes you down the path of righteousness. God is good. But then this brings us to, you know, how not to become weary and well doing. Uh, we need to understand that we are all ministers. Uh, Daniel was a victim of circumstances. Let me, let me ask you, why was Daniel in Babylon? Why was he? And the answer uh, is that uh, the Babylonian army took him. He 
He didn't go there on his arm. He was taken captive. But notice what, what, what God said. He said, I have carried you into exile. All right. I have carried you from Jerusalem yes. to Babylon. Here it is, Daniel's in a pagan place, a strange place, surrounded by uh, pagan people who will just do anything, say anything. But the Bible says that is exactly where God wanted him to be. Sometimes God will put us in some precarious yes. situation and we cannot understand, God, why am I here? I don't know nothing about this. This is not about me. I don't like this, Lord. And in the name of all you, why am I here? All right, all right. Uh, sometimes you have to ask God then. You know, why have you placed me here? It's because God is working through you to get to someone. All right, y'all. We've heard that old adage that one bad apple can spoil the whole barrel uh, so long that we think that bad news always wins and that good never wins. But the Bible teaches that we can overcome evil with the good. Uh, if you're in a work with a certain, uh, workplace, working next to a pagan, then see that as a God given opportunity to influence that person for good. Yes, yes. We don't always see it like that. Why I gotta work next to them? They get on my nerves. They always got something to say about somebody. Why you got to deal with me? Hey, why do we go? Why not you? Because God is showing them Himself through you. Oh, isn't it good to be in the Lord? Yes, yes, yes. That, that, that person whom you work with every day, whose eyes you look into, whose voice you hear, who shared uh, hopes and dreams with you, who told you about the new car that they bought, about their kids and their family. Uh, doesn't that? Christian, it's important for you to do your work and do it well. 
Don't laugh on your child. Right. Amen. 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 Do your work. Do your work and do it well. Set an example for others. Be there on time. How many of us are on time all the time for work? Amen. And you know, you cut it close. If you're not late, you just cut it close. You had a second, you get a second before that clock was going to strike work at time. It's your own time. Thank you. 
out to lunch. Appreciate that. Thank you for taking me out to lunch. You really didn't have to do it, but I appreciate it. Thank you for the raise. Amen. Amen. Even though the person that works right next to you got a few cents more than what you got. Well, I do my work better than you do. They got a little bit more than I appreciate what you got. But you didn't, you didn't have to keep to you in the first place. All right. And most, of, most of all, thank God for that little bit that you got. Lord, right. thank all you right. for this. Amen. You're right on time. You know I needed this. Amen. 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 But back in chapter 29 of Jeremiah, God gave instructions to the children of Israel that they how they should behave. They were taken uh, from Jerusalem to Babylon. God says, now here is how I want you to live as my children. That's just me paraphrasing. God says, I want you to build houses, settle down, plant gardens, and eat what they produce. Marry and have sons and daughters. Dines Find wives for your sons and give your daughters and marriage so that they too may have sons and daughters. Increase in number. Do not decrease. Also seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you in exile. Pray to the Lord for it because if it prospers, you will prosper. Amen. Those are some very practical uh, instructions and very up to date in Jeremiah passed down on the thoughts of God to the people in that time. Amen. Even when we in our situation that seems to be dire, no. Just, you know, settle themselves. Do what you need to do. Uh, uh, you make sure that you do what you need to do. Don't worry about Jim, John, Mary, Alice, what they're doing. Don't worry about them. Just worry about what you do. If they seem to get the praises and, you know, uh, they find favor in favor, don't you sweat it. God's got your back. He's giving you favor. The ones that seem like they're getting all the blessings, you get the blessings because they they doing what you what you what they see you do to get over to get by. You're always a model before someone. And carry yourself, you know, as you know, you are a kindly person. You don't have to go around, you know, preaching, uh, speaking a lot of scripture. You just carry yourself well. You work as you work it unto the Lord. You know that. You know that. You don't ever see the company of the, the president of the company. The president might come to you every now and then. And he might seem gracious and say, Oh, you work for me. Thank you so much for working for me. And you might not see him for another six months or two years. But when you do, when he come up to you, he said, It's a pleasure working here. I want to thank you, you know, for the wages that I get. I enjoy working for this company. And then he said, I want to see us grow. We become bigger and better. Amen. That will bless him. Amen. 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 So, uh, I want you to carry in your heart this morning. So, uh, whatever you do, uh, don't get weary and well do it. Right. You know, carry it to the workplace. You know, just do your work. Uh, someone desperately needs to. To, to, to know that uh, they're worth something, but that if they just keep on working, don't get weary of what you're doing. There's a blessing in doing your work. Uh, and sometimes you see your workplace as a sacred place where you can serve the Lord, where you can witness to those who don't know Jesus. I'm going to leave you with this. Made myself a 
third to walk. So you're free to walk. Make yourself a servant to everybody that you might win more than And Paul said that to the Jews I became as a Jew that I might win Jews. To those who are under the law and under the law that I might win those who are under the law. To those who are without the law as without law, not being without law towards God, but under law towards Christ, that I might win those who are without the law. Paul says, and sometimes we have to do this, to the weak we have to become weak, that we might win them over. Uh, we have to become all things to all people, that we might, um, by all means, save someone. We can save ourselves by our actions, the things that we do, how we reach out to are kind to people, um, um, we can win someone over. When someone's not very nice to you, you know, all you have to do is, you know, it's just like, like, like the water, just, you know, beat the water, just let it roll off of you. Don't take it to heart. Don't stress yourself out of what somebody else is doing. Um, you know, you know, if someone thinks, if someone is disrespecting you, um, you can just say, I didn't say anything out of the way to you, and I would appreciate you listening. Now you're not speaking to me that way. And then move on. Uh, this earth, this world is too short, and life is too short Amen. to carry on and fight all Amen. the time. Bible tells us to love the Lord with all of our heart, with all of our mind, with all of our soul, our whole very being to love God. When we do that, then we can love. Even though they're contrary to, 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 to God, we think that we can love them and win them to Christ. No, we don't have to beat them for all beat them with the Bible. We can just tell them, hey, brother, sister, I love you. God loves you. And I wish the best for you. And you know, if you have a brother from my own, I invite you over to, my, to, to our church. And we're loving people over there, not trying to convert you anymore.
from here. Oh, keep on going. Hey, Over the, in the mail and over tightly. God bless 
you. We need your tithing offering to maintain this building and to maintain the functions of the church. And so we ask you to continue to give as God has prospered you. Amen. So a tenth might not do for some. Amen. Some might need to give 20, 30 percent. Amen. But do what God has, God has prospered you and that you have peace with God doing. Does that make sense for everybody? He's the one who's going to judge, not us. We do thank you for our giving. We also want to make sure that we, uh, before we close and have our benediction, we want to ask you to continue to pray for our mother Catherine. She's very ill and all of her family is with her. And we want you to know we're going by to see her. As a matter of fact, today, Pastor Mike and I are going. And we want her to know that we love her. We want them to know that we love them too. Amen? Amen. Amen. Would you stand as we go for our benediction? We want to um, give this last good word. That's what that means, benediction. And we want to encourage you as you go through this holiday weekend. We're asking you to be safe. If people start acting a fool, get up and leave. Amen. Did y'all hear me? Yeah. Okay, and don't be out dark in places that you don't need to be. And just keep the prayer going. Ask the Lord to go before you, come behind you. That's what he said he would do. Amen? Amen. But we still are going to go forth in love and in peace. We're not going to fear the world because we're in it and not of it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Romans 16 and 25 says, Now to him who is able to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of a mystery which has been kept secret for as long ages past, but now has been disclosed. Amen. New life.